Hello everyone and welcome to the Divorce View Talk Show. Hi, it's Joni Winberg, Certified Human Behavior Consultant, Divorce Mentor, and CEO of the National Association of Divorce for Women and Children. I'm always thrilled and honored to be doing this show with my co-host, Rosalyn Sadaka. Hello, Roz. Hi, Joni. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And I'm very happy to be talking about a topic that is, is something that is very important for everyone who's going through a divorce or has been divorced because ultimately we all want to start our lives over again. And um, as you know, as I'm founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network for Parents, parents need to think ahead about the future. And one of the most frightening facets of getting divorced beyond the divorce experience is then moving on and no, trying to find a good partner for a healthy, successful relationship ahead. And there's lots of pitfalls, lots of fears we have. And we have a wonderful expert with us today who's going to talk about just that and getting us set up. So I want to introduce you to Amy Schoen. Hello, Amy. Hi. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Amy, Amy tell us, tell us a, a bit about yourself so, so our listeners and viewers know what's, who you are. Well, I myself am divorced and remarried, and I got my divorce fairly early for a lot of people in my mid-30s. And um, I never imagined that I would be divorced. Nobody was divorced in my family, and it was kind of like... Um, it just was not expected. So I didn't have any children, so that was kind of the heartbreak for me. And um, I, I did actually go out and start dating again, and I got a lot of support. And we'll talk about that and, and how to get back out there. And Absolutely. to write this time, I wrote a book called Get It Right This Time, How to Find and Keep Your Ideal Romantic Relationship. And then... Um, yeah, I met my husband when I was 41 and got remarried at 42, and I actually had my son when I was 48, so he's six years old. Oh, actually, this for you. you. Wow. Yeah. Well, you, you know, a lot of people are thinking about getting back into the dating game or getting out there after divorce. You know, I've heard many different reasons. We all have whether, you know, we would like to find the right one, the best one, or we're lonely and... You know, and so today it's so different. And you know, when I got divorced like 17 years ago, we didn't, we, we weren't hopping online to find someone to date. It was generally people would introduce you and so forth. But today's show is focusing on the five mistakes that people make, or sing, or divorced singles make when they get back or thinking about the dating game again. And Amy, we're just thrilled to have you discuss this with us because I'm sure our listeners are tuning in to save themselves this heartache maybe and think about the best way to go about this. So Amy, why don't you start us off and tell us what are the five mistakes that divorce singles make when they get I, back to dating? Yeah, I think they just sometimes, it depends on you and your person. So it's really about how your divorce happened and how hurt you were. Some of them are more, um, you know, you go. Some of them are just it's just a natural way of you leaving each other, and and other people are really hurt. So it's really about when you're ready to really get out there. What do you do for yourself? And I really believe one of my beliefs is that you really need to do the inner work first before you can go out. Touche. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you need to know what you want and what's important for your life. And I'm a certified professional life coach. So as of, as that, I love this opportunity to help people really see what do I want from me now? What do I want from my life? And, and so it's really about kind of creating the life you want and really getting in touch with, you know, your goals and how you see life in two, five, ten years. Um, you know, what do you want for your children if you have any? Um, what values are so important to you? You know, I'm really, that's the strength of my coaching is really to get deep into the values and really find that, you know, to, how do you get to that alignment and then to really learn to recognize it in other people when it shows up. So, yeah, that's the first step is really to get clear. You know, I, I have a three-step process is to gain the clarity about who you want to be in relationship, but that starts with yourself. Would you say, though, that, um, and maybe we've been guilty of this as well, that after divorce, people, as I mentioned, are lonely, and 
you know, just jump right in, you, you know, pressure from family and relatives and friends saying, who are you back out there dating yet? Have you met someone yet? Or, you know, you see your former dating and you think, why, I, why aren't I dating? What's wrong with me? I mean, do you think there's a lot of pressure for people to jump in faster than they should? Um, there can be. Again, it's a personal decision. I was one of the kind of people who did jump in very quickly. And I have yeah, to say, <laughs> I made every mistake in the book. And if you read the, 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 the um, book Crazy Time by Ab Abigail Trafford, um, you know, I was the hummingbird. And, you know, I really had to validate myself. Um, unfortunately, my ex-husband really did a number on myself. And I did go into therapy and work on my self-esteem. But I feel like I needed to be validated, and I, you know, I I went out with guys that I probably should not have, and you know, you're you're lonely, and you want to kind of prove yourself, and you do things you probably uh, don't even want to tell anybody about. But um, we've all been there, and so it's really about, you know, some of my clients, um, I I could say they love this, love to be in love. And they love that initial period, and so they jump into relationships so quickly. And I think guys are really, you know, some guys and a lot of my male clients are, are guilty of this. And they so desperately want to be in love, and some of them are so romantic. And so they're not really choosing. They're just kind of like, oh, I, I'm attracted to her. And they haven't done what I call a due diligence. They haven't figured out if this person is really a good person for me. So, yeah, it, we're all guilty of that. And, oh, um, <laughs> but if you're that kind of person, there are people out there, and I have clients, that they take a long time before they really get ready to put themselves out there. And um, they really have to kind of get over that hump of, you know, just, just go out there and meet people. Have fun. You know, make friends. You know, it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to put a lot of expectations. Wind up your circle, you know, because you have your married friends, but you need your single friends. Because what are you going to do? you got to go out and do stuff. And with meetup.com now, I mean, there's always a party going on <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> So many if you're in, a, in, a, in a, a bigger city, I have to say. It's harder when I have clients in more remote places and, and it's more challenging. And one, one of my uh, clients says this. She's so cute. She goes, um, well, what I do for fun is I go online and I, I date guys. But that's, that's my social life. Because she says she lives in a little town in, in, you know, outside of in Virginia and, and, and there's not much going on. I've, I've noticed, on the other hand, though, that a lot of clients – are so filled with the anxiety, the insecurities, the anger, the regrets, the resentments from the divorce that, that they're still looking backwards when they think they're trying to move forwards in starting new relationships and they're carrying a lot of baggage. They're carrying a lot of feelings about the other gender, feelings about all men, all women are like this, and they're also um, very suspicious and on guard. And, of course, all of those behaviors really keep you from opening the door to finding a real lasting relationship. Anyone can go out and find meaningless sex. But if you're looking for a relationship partner, then you're really setting yourself up for a lot of frustration and disappointment if you don't, as Amy said, do the inner work first and really learn how to release the old baggage and also working on forgiveness, forgiving your ex so that you can move on with a cleaner slate, and also forgiving yourself for mistakes you made even choosing that person or staying in the relationship longer than you should have or not being aware of a lot of things. So all of, all of that is very important before you could really start moving forward, don't you think? Oh, sure. And, you know, I, I definitely think there's a place for therapy and there's a place for coaching. And so really, um, when um, my clients come to me, they're ready to move forward. They're ready to get out there. They say to me, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't, you know, what I help them with their online dating process. I have something called the Successful Internet Dating Program where I apply my system. Um, 
to you know help them focus on you know what they really need to provide and what they really need to, to put out there because I believe in the attraction principle and I believe in what you put out there is what you attract so we have to be really careful about what what information you're putting out there and I again you know work from values and once we got the values really deeply clarified we put those values into the profile and you have to see the difference the, no. They start getting a better quality of person, you know, uh, attracted to them, and and that's where the connection occurs. So it's really exciting to see that. So I'm hearing that the first mis the first mistake people make is that they don't take the time to really uh, get to know themselves again or get really clear on who they are. Right. They just jump in and they think that is the other person and they don't right. really look at themselves and what their hand was in, in the breakup of their marriage because everybody had a role. Oh, stuff, and, yeah. And even though it may have not been your fault or something like that. Um, none of us did, did but we had yeah. other people. <laughs> I was going to say, none of, us had that, none of us had that stuff or baggage. Okay. It's just other people, yeah. <laughs> what is the mistake? What's, what, yeah. what's mistake number two? Um, you are dating people because um, for chemistry, and you're not really looking at a broader picture. Uh -huh. And I think attraction can grow over time. And you know, I believe if you go on a first date, um, you just look for three things. You know, do you like this person? Does the conversation flow? And are you somewhat attracted? And if you can answer yes, I would go out again. And sometimes it takes a while to really get to know people. And I know even myself. My husband was a is a more quiet person. He's an introvert, and they're like these layers of of, of an onion you have to peel. And so um, I really didn't kind of wasn't giving him the time of day actually. <laughs> and he just luckily he was in, in we were in a situation where we were on a weekend together, and he just kind of kept showing up and kept like being in my space. And he was you know the uh, at my dinner table, and we needed a fourth for tennis, and you know so. As I and then you know I got to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with him and I'm like wow this is a really nice guy um, so he's a more quiet guy and so it wasn't really easy so I think you have to really kind of and and I would say you know everyone's looking for that passion you know but you knew and I know the passion just kind of is a flash in a pan I mean you you know to to maintain that is 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 really a very hard thing it's really about finding someone that you really feel you can trust and build a life with. And somebody who's going to treat you well and respect you, and somebody you enjoy being with, you know, for those, Definitely. you know, because most of you, you know, I know when I was going through a divorce, um, I was in a group in the Washington, D.C. area called New Beginnings, and I would say I was one of the younger people. So most of the people in the mid 40s and beyond, and the kids are starting to get older, and, and once they leave for college and stuff like that. So it's really about being just the two of you. Mm, absolutely. So what would be um, mistake number three? Um, that they kind of go to places they don't really take the time to take. I, I have this part of my system is to focus on where you're going to meet people who share your values. And so using your values to figure out where you need to go. For instance, if you're a healthy, active person and that's important to you, I mean, I know it sounds easy, but you have to find places you can meet other ha healthy, active people. I met my husband in a bike bicycling group in D.C. Um, and that's important. And you don't want to be with someone who doesn't share your values. But maybe just kind of going where it's easy, not you just and, and kind of be where your friends are going or something like that. And not really taking the time to say, am I going to meet the right people here? Is this really where I want to be hanging out? And these are going to meet the people that I really enjoy hanging out with. So they do what's kind of easy, or they just go with the flow, or they go with the crowd, and and they're not really, you know, having that good of a time, but they just go. But to, to, to really take the time and figure out where you should be. I have heard that people have joined hiking clubs because they love the outdoors, they love to hike, and they've met some great people there. Yes. Yeah. But that's that. There's biking, the hiking. We have, you know, we. I mean, we. Even, there's a sailing group. There's a tennis group. There's. I mean, but those are not everybody's active. We have groups that are for cult people who are into culture. You know, if you're into being, you know, I have a client who really likes intellectual stimulation, and we talked about him going to the uh, Smithsonian, and mm -hmm. you know, going to some lectures or going to a bookstore that has authors. And where are people discussing interesting things? You know, you got to show up. 
And then if you have um, a value around community and giving back to your community, then you know there's some um, volunteer opportunities. And the other thing is sometimes the person you meet uh, is not the person who you're going to date, but they put you in touch with the person you're going to date. So, you know, I help my clients get really clear and be able to communicate to other people. We, I call it the 30-second infomercial. To be able to communicate to someone who you are looking for so they can help be a scout to you. So we go through a whole exercise where we, like, look at who's in your network and who can introduce you to the right person and who would be a good person for that because not everybody is, is the right person to – not everyone's comfortable doing that and being in that role. Mm. So, Yeah. Ross, you have some feedback on that as far as the people that you've heard where they've met other interesting people. I totally agree with everything Amy is, is saying. This might be a good point to just interject something about if you're divorced and have children, then there's a whole other dynamic involved beyond just the obvious things of talking about finding a good mate for you. And there's a few words of caution I'd like to share. One is that you really need to take your time and not introduce your kids to partners unless you feel you've met someone who is very significant and, and a likely long-term partner relationship for you because when you have that revolving door of new people coming along, it's confusing for kids. They feel a competition with their other parent who's, who's the divorce side and it, it every time builds anxiety for the children to meet new people. Sometimes they get very attached and then in three months or six months the relationship is over and their, their hearts are broken. You have to take into account how vulnerable your children are and also the fact that they're going to sabotage you in many ways. Kids of divorce may be very attached to the fact that they don't want their mom or dad dating some stranger and they will act out create health problems, suddenly get sick, and do a lot of things that are intentionally sabotaging. So you have to be alert and aware of that and then start talking to them. Kids need reassurance. They need the security of knowing that they're going to be okay and that you don't love any new partner more than you love them and that no new partner is going to replace them in your life or replace their other parent. A lot of, for a lot of kids, the key is no one's going to replace my dad or my mom. And if you reassure them that their dad and mom are still going to be the significant person in their life, they're more likely to accept another person coming along. If not, the tension is going to be much higher. So well, uh, Rod, I was just going to say, would you also say, too, the concern for the children is that you know my mom or dad has don't doesn't live here any longer they've left I is this new person going to take that my mom or dad away you right know, think, that's the reassurance they need to know that despite the fact that um, one parent is dating or both parents are dating it doesn't mean that they're losing their their primary parents who who they are so attached to I think mm -hmm. that in my own case my son was 11 when I divorced and that's what really helped him accept the partners that I did introduce him to because he never felt that he was losing his dad. He had a solid relationship with his father and the guys that I brought into his life were good friends of mom, but they were never in a position to replace dad. And I think that's very, very important Absolutely. to feel yeah. and understand on a, on a gut level. So I just wanted to share that because that element and if your kids don't like your your partner, really think twice because you never want to marry or, or be committed to another person who doesn't have a good relationship with your children and doesn't respect them as the very important beings in your life. There's no competition. Between mm, that's them. a big red flag. That's a red flag. Absolutely. Yeah, I've seen situations where it just didn't work for that reason. And the relationships didn't go forward because of the kids and, and, and uh, they, the kids didn't get along or um, that the, the, the man didn't respect the fact that the, the woman had the responsibilities and, and he was 16, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't think that relationship ever went forward because of that reason. Yeah, it can be tough. Great, 
great mistakes here or just even helping people be conscious when they go back into dating again what would be mistake number four Amy um, well I think we, the, we said a couple of them but I think that there's a dating turnoff um, there are a couple of them I actually have um, you know uh, several dating turnoffs but the ones I find from the divorce side is um, and I know I'm guilty of this one but we would go on our first date and then we get into what happened in your marriage and what mm -hmm. happened in your marriage <laughs> and you really don't want to air your dirty laundry because you know what the past is the past and you're a different person now and everybody has their past and and so you know there's a time to share that and there's not a time to share that it's really about focusing on who that person is today and what they you know more about them I wouldn't really get into all that mm -hmm. and it never served me and I learned to when people did ask me the question I learned to do the quick really quick like answer it and move on you know kind of answer I was just like well we just grew in different directions and we wanted different things and and now you know here I am <laughs> you know don't even go into it because people are just so curious They're like what's wrong with her or what's wrong with him you know <laughs> everybody wants to know but you know, I always believe that, you know, one dancer, I'm a dancer, so one dance is different with a different person, it's a different dance, and I've seen people switch partners, and they're much happier with each other, and yeah. it's still the same person, you know, so anything's possible. <laughs> That's wise, wise advice, because I have seen where people start talking about their, their ex and all of a sudden the whole first date has been about each other's ex and it's like is that what we really want to talk about you know so that's great yeah. what would be the last mistake five, step, um, mistake number five um, let's see that's, that's a good one um, I had that one uh, there's a lot of mistakes we talked about the chemistry we talked about what the place is um, what do most people don't do that will better the chances? Um, yeah, let's just see. I just think, um, I mean, if I just have to wrap up, so the, the second step is to focus on where to meet the people, and the third step, oh, this is a good one, is really to take the time and learn some new skills. And I really made it a mission to really learn how to be in relationship better and to learn some relationship skills. And so, you know, there's always things that we can learn, and, and so they're just really simple. Like in my book, Get It Right This Time, you know, I just have some simple things that you think, oh, you know, I had a woman who actually read my book who, who was my editor, and she was married for 25 years, and she said, wow, this stuff is really great because it just reminds me, you know, it's like we took our driver's license test when we were how old, like 18? And, and, you know, it's like, it would be great to just get a review, you know, because we forget, we get lazy, you know, um, to be respectful, to to say appreciations, to just to say, hey, thank you, I appreciate that. Simple things that you need to do, little relationship skills, just to listen and, and not to feel like you have to be right. And there's just so many different um, different things and, and, and tips and things that I learned along the way that I like to share with my clients to help them be better in relationships. So, you know, that's why I call the book uh, Get It Right This Time because I feel like we're you keep trying to get it right you know and I, I have some friends and clients you know it's not even their first marriage it's, it, I mean it's their second or third marriage so I think we just uh, try to learn and do better and make better choices for ourselves and you know I dating should be fun and we should enjoy ourselves and if it's not fun then then you need to kind of switch into a different mindset absolutely I think too what's important is for people to learn to focus on what the good things about that person we all tend to focus on the quirks and I hear that all the time from my clients you know this 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 and I'm saying you know what we are who we are we all have our quirks we all have our list so what do you like about this person what are their good points and focus on that and, and where can you meet in the middle you know you have your way of doing things I have my way what's the easiest way what can we bring to the table together to make the relationship click you know, I, I think it's like you said, it's the mindset. Have a positive mindset and um, respect that person for who they are. They're all unique, they're all different. And, and um, how do we see the value in each other? Or what is our value that we bring to the table? And, and coming from, from that place, I just wanted to add that um, 
what Amy had, had said early on about shared values. I think once you meet the person, you really do over the first few dates and the first few months of knowing each other, is find out if you do have shared values from there. What kind of future are you looking forward to together? Is, does one person want to travel the world as they get older and the other one wants to stay home and visit the grandchildren? Do you um, share a spiritual values? Do you, do you share philosophical and political values and interests that are going to keep you going? In the dating, early dating times, you may be doing that, but what about down the road long term? And, and what are the values you have about parenting? Definitely. Well, one of the things is your life goals have to be aligned, and yes. that's really, really important. And even, and especially in, I find my 60 plus clients, this is very important because some people are still working, some people want to retire. And I had a woman who had her own business in DC, and she was dating a guy in Philadelphia, and he had three kids who were still, some of them in high school and college, and he was, you know, not going to be retiring anytime soon. And I was curious why she even was dating this guy, because it took them a lot of effort. It Actually, that relationship did not last, because she became resentful of the time and the money she was he was spending on his kids, and he had to. You know, there was no choice, and so they just went different places in their lives. And so, wouldn't and she had she went two years with that guy, um, mm -hmm. and wouldn't she have been better for her to say, you know what, this is just not the right situation. I think we should just find different partners because you know you're here and I'm there, and that would just save them so much time and heartache. Well, um, kind of something that made me think of what you both were saying you know maybe maybe uh, he was a great partner sexually and fit that need you know I mean that's always a big question from people you know you hear so many things that people are second night they're hopping in, uh, into the bed and that some saying wait a couple of months to really get to know the person before that becomes part of the uh, big picture or you know so as a uh, relationship coach, uh, what have you found or people have well, asked? I found, so you see my website says Motivated to Marry. So I, I have two websites. I have Heart, Mind, Connection and I have Motivated to Marry. And I actually work with people who are looking for serious relationships and that's kind of like this, you know, where I might put my attentions. And, you know, so not everybody was, is, is going to go and get married again, but a lot of the clients who are divorced or widowed or whatever who come to me do see themselves getting married again. And, you know, I go through the whole process to help people really decide, it, do they really want marriage? You know, are you motivated to marry? I have a quiz. If you go to my website, Motivated to Marry, you can get my free e-course. The quiz is in there. And you can see whether you're motivated. And, and maybe you're not, and that's okay. You know, it's just self-knowledge and self-information. And, you know, yes, so some people are just looking to live for today, and that's that. But, um, you know, uh, my whole thing is helping my clients see that different people are dating for different reasons. Mm -hmm. You have to be clear about the reasons why you're dating, and then hopefully find people who are dating for the fine reasons same reasons. So my clients get hurt when they're dating people who aren't serious. They have mm. no intention to ever get married and and or be in a serious committed relationship. Yeah. And so that is something you gotta try to find out sooner than later if you can. Now yes there are people who are not honest and upfront. <laughs> Hope that you do meet you know, you can sense that and, and you you know, I call you know, the 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 whole connection radar. You're you're adjusting your connection radar. And and so that you'll be able to really see somebody who's a little insincere. And I think actions speak a lot for you know, rather than words. And so that's a real telltale sign. Is is the person gonna really step up to the plate? And, and follow through. And and my clients, you know, when they meet, it's really, once they've done this work, they recognize that this is a really great person. They, each person recognizes that, and it just clicks. And then they start dating each other, they stop, they take their profiles down, and then they're a couple. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I think the biggest thing, too, is that to, number one, is to make sure that person is available. You know, this is what I found from other people getting on the sites that, you know, each, whether man or woman, we're just telling stories that they're not, that are, they're available, they're not married, and then, and they're really just separated. 
and also they uh, just recently got divorced and I never re really recommend that too much because these people are going through their stuff and it's a it's a it's a lot of baggage and things going on with that person I find that people aren't really you know the best choice at first when they just got divorced you know I know how I was when I just got divorced and it's well and I have to say you have to look at every situation yes. because yeah. I have a situation where sometimes people stay in a marriage just for certain reasons True. Um, and and that marriage has been dead for a long time and that person is really ready to find that person and when they do you know so I do have clients who have met people who have been at the probably you know tail end of their divorce and is are ready for a relationship but I would say you know more times than not you know you really want someone to be out there and I know there was a difference between being separated and divorced mm -hmm. and when I was motivated to marry now I didn't have children you know I, I found out like I dated this guy and he was separated and then when he got divorced he basically said to me I just got divorced I'm not gonna get remarried you know I just you know and and for me I was in my early 40s and, and I really wanted to have a family so you know I had to the time issue yeah. and some people are divorced you know they do they want to have children they want to have more children I had a girlfriend she was 40 she wanted to have a second child you know and and there's that that kind of situation so there is a time element sometimes you know I people assume when you're divorced you don't have to rush into anything you don't but it's really about your preference and wh what you want for your life and some people do rush into things and you just hope that they, you're not going to make the same mistakes and I always say I I don't make the same mistakes I make different ones so you know like, like it's a continual learning process and and I learn with my clients I help them learn and um, it's very rewarding work and it's really helping when people get in a much better place in a relationship where they feel loved and and you know care for it's just it's just really wonderful well you certainly shared a lot with us to to help give us a lot to think about and a, a lot to um, move ahead on when, when we're contemplating um, dating or for those listeners who are already in the process of starting. I think the information was really valuable and insightful and correct and it's, it's in alignment with, with the same information that I, I teach and share and, and we're just delighted that, that you were able to give us those insights today. So thank you so much Amy Schoen for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And the website again, so people will uh, know. Well, I know it's on the website. And there's a seven day free e course. It really just takes two minutes a day to read. And it's really kind of just gives you some really great nuggets of information. And, and of course, if you want more, you know, there, there are more opportunities to work with me with my coach, Motivated to Marry Dating Secrets coaching program and uh, coaching club and some other opportunities. So, so definitely look at the website. I have a blog there. Uh, make comments and and you know like if they if you want to stay in touch feel free to stay in touch and and hopefully I can help you find that new person when you're ready love it love Thanks. it well this has been a great show uh, Joni don't you think oh absolutely I, I I'm just uh, wishing that uh, 17 years ago I had you sitting in front of me Amy saying now before you jump out there too fast <laughs> <laughs> let's do the deal let's do the work so great advice I hope it's helped our listeners no matter what, what stage they're in mm -hmm. after divorce and I agree with you so much Amy it's it's independent it's it's their own unique situation right so thanks everyone for tuning in it's always a joy to be with my great co-host here Roz Roz thanks again love it when we're doing this together Thank you, Joni, and we'll see everyone again next um, Tuesday, 6 o'clock Eastern Time for the Divorce View. And thanks for tuning in. See you next week.